<sighs> twinkle, da, twinkle, shine bright. But when I go to bed at night, I see a diamond shape, and I don't look, and I look at the dot shining brightly over my head. I know that. I hope I don't even know then, but then I go way to bed and I close my eyes at night and I go to bed with a fright. And some days I wake up inside my body I see a diamond sleeping and a flea. And I did buy a bee, and sometimes I twist and turn, but I didn't know what I had to want. And sometimes I twist and turn, and sometimes I twist, but sometimes I turn, and sometimes I wish for the dark, but I didn't know so far. And sometimes I get tired, and sometimes I don't react. But sometimes diamonds keep me on. Don't mind. <laughs> Mama. Huh. K A T I D E. Exclamation point. Katie. Yeah, you did a good job. This is Katie's story. It's a story meant to educate and to warn, but to also give hope. Look at Strawberry. Who did Speed the Belly? Yeah. And who did Speed the Belly? That's a big strawberry. Who did Speed the Belly? Mama? Katie. Holy cat. <laughs> My mom. For the most part, our little Katie is a normal little girl. Hi, Mom. Hi, Katie. Uh, what's that? The baby. At the, in the pet store. Wow. Very nice. It has a beautiful, it has a pencil on it to that store box and he puts it in. Oh. So he do a bad dog. You're a pretty painter. Forward. <laughs> How old are you right now? Three. Three. Huh? Are you almost four? Yeah. Do you like to paint? What else do you like to do? I love to kiss. To kiss? <laughs> Who do you love to kiss? You. Who else? Everyone in the show <laughs> You're funny. And how old are you? I'm um, three. Good. What year is it? What'd you get for Christmas? Normal. What is this? What'd you get for Christmas? I can't name everything though. Katie, the thing I'm pointing the camera at. Uh, what is this thing? <laughs> right here. <laughs> Easy big ultimate oven. Where'd you get it from? Did you get it from Santa Claus? Yes. And what are you baking in your Easy Bake Ultimate Oven? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. Don't they look yummy? Yeah! Yummy! Yummy! Katie, what? tell us one thing that we don't know about Katie. I'm stupid. Katie! <laughs> no, you're not. Tell us one thing we don't know about Katie. I'm real. What's your favorite food? Hmm. Spaghetti! Alright, this is the end of Katie's cooking show. Say goodbye!
But there was a time when we were concerned things could have been much different. You see, when my wife was pregnant with Katie, at 34 weeks she went in for a regular doctor's visit. Just a normal checkup. But it was clear to the doctor that something was wrong. An ultrasound showed that that was true. We were sent to Children's Hospital in Milwaukee to see a specialist who confirmed what our doctor had feared. Our little baby girl had hydrocephalus, something that we had never even heard of before. While waiting to go in to find out more and to have the condition checked, my wife and I went online and did some research of our own. What we found was quite scary. But let's first talk about what hydrocephalus is. Hydrocephalus comes from the Greek words hydro and seth, meaning water and head, respectively. Hydrocephalus is a medical condition which can be caused by both congenital or acquired factors. The brain has four ventricles. These ventricles fill with cerebral spinal fluid, which is then drained down the spine and absorbed into the abdomen, a normal cycle which occurs in the human body. Hydrocephalus, however, is a medical condition where the ventricles have an abnormal accumulation of cerebral spinal fluid. This leads to an increased intracranial pressure. When hydrocephalus occurs in childhood, it is likely to cause progressive enlargement of the head. Hydrocephalus can also cause many other problems, including mental disability. Symptoms may include severe headaches, irritability, sleepiness, vomiting, seizures, changes in personality, memory, or ability to reason or think, changes in facial appearance and eye spacing, including crossed eyes and uncontrolled eye movements. There are over 1 million people in the United States who are currently living with hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is the number one reason for brain surgery in children. About one out of every 1,000 babies born in this country will have hydrocephalus. While there is presently no cure for hydrocephalus, it is treatable. What my wife and I found in our research led us to believe that we would likely have a child born with severe mental disability and greatly delayed developmental skills. Basically, we were under the belief that we would have a mentally retarded child who would be in diapers until they were four years old and could take even longer before they'd learned things like walking. We thought our baby would be born looking like some freakish alien child. Though these things are possible, we would soon find that it was also possible for the child to be fairly normal, as was the case with Katie. Katie was delivered by cesarean at 39 weeks. At that point, a normal delivery would have been impossible due to the size of Katie's head. Despite that, when I first looked at Katie, I remember my surprise to find that she was quite normal looking and I couldn't believe how beautiful my baby was. But because of the building pressure pressing against Katie's brain, 
she would need to have surgery immediately to place a shunt valve which would be used to drain the fluid from the ventricles in her brain to her abdomen via a tube. Not being able to hold her right away or to cut her umbilical cord as I had been able to do with the, our two children that were born before her was difficult but necessary. Unfortunately, due to the high volume of emergency surgeries being performed that day, Katie's surgery would have to wait. It went over a day where she was unable to even eat. I spent that time myself in a small room holding her tiny little hand. Finally, she was taken into surgery and they put in her shunt. The human brain contains the ventricular system this is a set of four interconnected cavities known as ventricles. The ventricles are where cerebrospinal fluid is produced. The fluid is used to bathe and cushion the brain and spinal cord. In Katie's case, one or more of the aqueducts in which the fluid passes through has some sort of blockage. It is unknown which one or how much of a blockage there is. It is too difficult for doctors to determine. The blockage causes the fluid to accumulate within the ventricles. The accumulation causes pressure against the brain and skull. Placing a shunt valve within her head allows the fluid to be drained back through into the body as it should be and releases the pressure from her brain. After about a week in the hospital, we were finally able to take her home and start our life, still not knowing what the extent of the damage to her brain might be. We were told that we might not know this until she was two or three years old. It was a very stressful time. And after a while, although testing and scans did show some measurable damage, to the white matter portion of her brain, developmental testing indicated that she was amazingly above average in communication comprehension. White matter actively affects how the brain learns and functions. It transmits signals from one region of the brain to another and is responsible for getting actions and information to pass between different brain regions. Still, we would continue to wait to see what, if any, problems she might have. The surgery was successful, and for nearly three years, Katie was fine and developing fairly normally. However, nearing her third birthday, she began to experience symptoms of a shunt malfunction. We took her back into Children's Hospital where a series of tests were performed, determining that there was in fact a shunt malfunction and she would need surgery to perform a shunt revision. Is this gonna be your last surgery? It is? I hope so. Well, uh, I'm not gonna have any more headaches. Hope not. About 40,000 surgeries are performed annually to treat hydrocephalus. Of these, only 30% are the patient's first surgery. It is quite common for a patient to have multiple shunt revisions within their lifetime. Katie is nearly 9 years old now, and between April 1, 2009, and August 16th, 2013, she had a total of seven shunt revisions. There are multiple possible complications which can occur in a shunt. These include shunt malfunction, shunt failure, and shunt infection, as well as the possibility of an infection of the shunt tract. The most common reason for shunt failure is the infection of the shunt tract. When a shunt malfunctions, 
the cerebral spinal fluid will begin to accumulate once again inside the brain, causing symptoms such as headaches, nausea, vomiting, or light sensitivity. It can even cause seizures. Yet another problem which may occur is overdrainage. This happens when the cerebral spinal fluid drains more rapidly than it is produced. This causes symptoms like severe headaches, irritability, light sensitivity, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, the list goes on. There you go. All right. So, well, I have to think right now it's uh, August 17th. We came in August 16th, 2013. Um, not really expecting to have another shunt revision, but suspecting that there might be a problem, and we were going to get some pictures taken, MRI, x-rays, and then we were told that she was going to have to go into surgery for another revision. How are you doing though? Good. It was just on last night. You're feeling okay? Mm-hmm. Did you wake up with a headache? No. No? So that's good, because you woke up with headaches four days in a row. Now you're doing better? Mm-hmm. How's the hospital food? Good. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the hospital food? Sausage. I think you know that. All right, Katie. So, you went in for your shunt on Friday. Had the surgery and came home Saturday. Now it's Monday. And how do you feel? Not good. Head hurts, you just threw up. And something that doesn't really get talked about is waiting because we just called the hospital and we're waiting for him to call back to see what we should do, right? Mm-hmm. Is your head your head's a little bit better since you threw up? Yeah. But it still hurts? Because yeah. while I'd like to say things that get easier as time goes on, that's not really the case. Like, we always ask, well, what do we look for? How do we know if she's having a shunt malfunction or if she's just having a headache or whatever? And we've always been told, oh, oh, you'll know. You'll just know. But it's never been like that, um, especially because Katie has never presented. Um, typically, she's not a textbook case. And I don't know if, if there are textbook cases. Uh, all I know is how Katie is. And we've, we've just never known all she can she can be happy and big smile on her face and be having like a sh- full-blown shunt malfunction and then there's other times that she's seem you know like she's just not feeling good and it's there might be a problem but it's not as bad a problem or whatever so it's, it's been really confusing and it, it's hard because a lot of pressure gets put on us as her parents to know, like this time, I mean, they they sent us home less than 24 hours after a, a shunt revision, and just said, you know, I mean, basically, we can either wait at the hospital or we can wait at home. And sure, we'd rather be home than in the hospital, but it does put a lot of pressure on us as the parents to um, to know if uh, you know if she's okay or if she needs to go back. And uh, it, it can be really difficult. So we're back at Children's Hospital and uh, waiting while Katie's getting a CT scan. She's had uh, way too many of these to keep track of, and you can only imagine what the radiation has got to be doing with her. Uh, she makes it through all this hydrocephalus stuff, she'll probably end up with a brain tumor.
Katie, why are you in the hospital? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I do know. It's because we brought you here yesterday because you had such a bad headache and the pain medication wouldn't work, but they can't find anything wrong with your shunt and haven't been able to give us any answers on why you have such a bad headache, but it's gone now anyways, right? Feeling all better? Yeah. Any headache get all now? So, so we'll be going home again and then we'll wait and see if uh, anything else happens, right? Yeah, they just, um, they kept her overnight for observation. The headache went away by itself before they could even give her anything for it, but at least they were able to see uh, how miserable she was for, for a, a little while before it went away. Hasn't been back. They did a shunt tap, and they seemed, you know, everything's flowing fine. CT scan showed improvement after her shunt revision. And uh, so there's only a couple theories on why she had such a bad headache. Um, you know, her body reacting to her ventricle shrinking back down. There was a little bit of blood in the ventricle after the surgery. And that's gotten better, but they said that, that could cause some headaches too. So they really don't have a definitive answer for us. Um, it's just, you know, we'll be taking her home again and waiting and hoping that... Uh, Everything's fine, and, and she doesn't have any more problems. We were told several times that if Katie experienced a shunt malfunction, we would know. We'd asked what to look for. We were given some of the symptoms, but most commonly we were told, Oh, you'll know. We found that this is not always true. There are many causes of headaches, so a parent who has a child with hydrocephalus can become quite concerned any time their child has a headache. It is important to watch them carefully, looking for any other possible signs of a shunt malfunction. If a shunt malfunction is suspected, contacting your doctor immediately is very important. Yes, Katie is nearly nine years old now. She's, in many ways, just a normal child. It's rare that we even think, hey, Katie has hydrocephalus. And hydrocephalus certainly does not define her. She acts like any other girl her age. She's smart. She's funny. She's beautiful. She is everything that we could hope for, and not much at all of the things that we first feared when we were first told that our baby had hydrocephalus. Katie hasn't developed slowly at all. She has no mental problems, though her brothers might argue that. She's advanced. She's actually in a math class two grades ahead of her level. Not bad for a kid with brain damage. She sings, she dances, she plays, just like anyone else. Of course, with her own unique twist. A unique twist that all of us give our lives. Having a child diagnosed with hydrocephalus can be very overwhelming, but there are places like the Hydrocephalus Association who can be very helpful. Sure, we still have to keep an eye on her, and there's always that little bit of worry in the back of our heads that comes to the front whenever she complains of a headache or starts moaning in her sleep. But we live our lives day by day. We will continue to do so. And Katie's story will go on, hopefully, for a very, very long time to come. I climb up inside of the mountain. I hear a lion roar. I climb down inside of the mountain. But I can't take it anymore. I come in the house in confusion. I don't know where I belong. And you can only.
fish in the sea, they'll have a home, and they're not like me. I climb up one side of the mountain, I hear a lion roar. I climb down one side of the mountain, and I can take it much, much more. I come in the house in confusion, but I know where I belong. And you don't need to help me, even if you hear my song. I hear a bear somewhere, hunting fish in the sea. They all have a home, and they're not like me. I've been hiding in a corner. From the beginning there was nowhere to hide I can't escape the water And I can't escape the waves of the tide But I belong out here With the bears and the deer And the bees and the trees And the fresh air I've been hiding in a corner But from the beginning there was nowhere to hide I can't escape the water, and I can't escape the waves or the tide. But I belong out here with the bears and the deer, with the bees and the trees, and the fresh air. Yes, I belong out here with the bears and the deer, and the bees and the trees, and the fresh air. I've been hiding in a corner, but from the beginning there was nowhere to hide. Can't escape the water, and I can't escape the waves or the tide.